In this video, we're going to break down exactly what you should expect from this year's TVs. Over the last few years, we have been spoilt for choice as to what we can go for, with great options on OLEDs, mini LEDs and normal LED TVs. But in 2022, what should we expect? Well, most years we want some massive leaps in technologies and normally these sort of things tend to happen at a bit of a snail's pace. But this year we could be seeing brand new technologies coming to your home. And we're going to be seeing some brands get involved in some technologies that previously they've had absolutely no interest in. And now with CES coming very, very soon, we should have some confirmation as to what we can expect this year. So I'm going to go over exactly what we know and what we can expect to see in 2022. Firstly, Samsung, famous for trying to force QLEDs down our throats when we all know that OLED is the better technology. But seriously, Samsung do have some fantastic TVs and have always notoriously avoided OLED. But they are making a U-turn. So part of the problem here is that LG owns the monopoly on OLED TVs. And this isn't me saying that LG do the best OLED TVs, that's a conversation for a different day. But every single OLED TV has inside it a panel that was built by LG, even if that TV isn't an LG TV. I'm looking at you, Sony. Now Samsung have decided to dig deep into their pockets and purchase 2 million LG OLED panels for their TVs. Ultimately, this deal is good for everyone. Samsung get to have their slice of that sweet OLED pie. We the consumer benefit from there being more competition. More competition can equal better TVs and reduced prices. An LG benefit because Samsung are paying them the big bucks for those panels. So it's very, very interesting and it's almost as if Samsung have decided that actually they've made a mistake and OLED is definitely the way forward. Which, for the time being, it definitely is. So what are these displays going to be like? Well we don't really know until we see one as this is going to be a new step for Samsung. Now for those Samsung fans that have missed out on the benefits of OLED, is this one worth buying for you? Maybe, but it could be worth waiting just a little bit to make sure that one, they're good enough and two, that Samsung have a bit of time to iron out any kinks. So is this Samsung waving the white flag? Have they lost to LG? Well LG may have won the battle but Samsung is playing to win the war. This year we could see the introduction of Samsung's QD OLEDs. Yes, a brand new TV technology. And ultimately, without having a conversation with the CEO of Samsung, I think this is Samsung's main push into the future of TVs. This is gonna be a hybrid between their quantum dot technology and OLED technology that can bypass LG and they can make their own panels. And basically, they're just gonna cut LG out of the picture. Well, how does it work? Well, similar to LG's OLED panels, it will have the organic light emitting diodes that give us that infinite contrast ratio we love from LG's OLEDs. But instead of that passing light through a color filter of RGB subpixels, it instead is going to be using quantum dots. So. Who cares? What's the difference? Well, unlike the RGB filter, quantum dots won't lose light on the way through. So basically, the brightness is going to be better, the colours are going to be more accurate, therefore HDR content should look a lot better on this TV. Is it too good to be true? Is Samsung just trying to sell us a dream? Well actually, Samsung have sold this dream to the kings of colour accuracy themselves, Sony. I am the king! Yes, Sony are rumoured to be buying these QD OLED panels from Samsung to make their own QD OLED displays. So if that doesn't scream that this is going to be the future of OLED technology, I don't know what will. So what's the issue? If this is the future, why isn't everyone doubling down now? Well, first of all, it's new. So the price is going to be a bit steep. You're probably looking at one of these displays costing at least four times what an OLED display of the same size would cost. So that's going to kick the stone down the road for a starter. Plus, you might want to try and avoid getting the early adopter regret, just taking a bit of time to wait until the technology has been proven and then also perfected. But this is very exciting and as it becomes more popular, you could see normal OLEDs becoming even cheaper as LG try to justify you buying one of their panels. We know that LG are going to be releasing a 42 inch OLED that is another 6 inches smaller than the current smallest which is a 48 inch. Now this OLED in theory is going to be 
perfect for gamers. It should be available on the C range of LG OLEDs. That means similar to the C9, the C10. So that will definitely bring with it 4K at 120 hertz with VRR and all of that stuff going hand in hand. And with that ridiculously low input lag that you come to expect from an LG OLED, this could be the perfect gaming monitor. Any other OLED changes to expect this year? Well, nothing significant, I don't think. I think the main benefits we're going to see this year is some thermal changes that are going to make the TVs a lot more efficient, make them be able to get slightly brighter with slightly less risk of burning, but I don't think it's going to be anything that revolutionary. Potentially, we might see some price drops in some of the larger OLED displays as they're becoming a lot more popular. I'm thinking things sort of 75 inches and up. How about mini LED? So I've had the privilege to test and review LG's QNED 99. That's their flagship mini LED TV. And those TVs are brilliant, but they're not perfect. They definitely will blow your mind with how amazing they look, but there are small things that aren't necessarily perfect, and you can watch my review here. Now, the problem with mini LED is that it's very quickly reaching the peak of what it can offer. Now, that's not necessarily a bad thing. It's less the end of mini LED, but more the end of the beginning of mini LED. What we'll probably start to see now, and hopefully we'll see some of this this year, is some other brands getting their hands on this technology and using it, creating a much more competitive marketplace and therefore bringing the prices down. So if you're gonna be avoiding OLED and you wanna go for your best LCD experience, mini LED could be the way to go and it's definitely becoming a more accessible technology. Are we going to be seeing some micro LEDs for consumers? No. Not yet. I would say give it a few more years. Anything else this year? Well, we should start to see initial integration with HDMI 2.1. A. Now I may do another video explaining exactly what this is and what this means for TVs. Now in short, it is a new HDMI standard that just allows for a lot more control as to what can be displayed on your TV. So for example, if you have a gaming console, it means that that console has a lot more control as to how the screen that is connected to will be able to output that image. It's a bit complicated, it isn't going to change things ridiculously, but it will make things slightly better. For you technical people, that is something called source-based tone mapping. Now if I do another video I will go into a bit more detail as to what to look out for if you are going to be getting a TV that might support this. It does sound very boring and in spite of making our lives a lot more complicated when buying HDMI cables, it should make how we watch content better. Other than that, expect better processors, better smart home integration, integration with other third party developers. And then I'll see you in a week or so when CES completely proves me wrong on half of what I've just said. But until then, click on one of these videos and subscribe. Whoop!